Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss the causes and prevention of displaced abomasums, or DA, in dairy cows. Let's look at some of the economic losses associated with displaced abomasum. Treatment costs will vary from $100 to $200 per case and could even be higher depending on location and distance by the veterinarian. Next of all, about 10% of the cows that are diagnosed with a DA are culled or die before the next DHIA test. Very high risk operation. Therefore, many farmers will not operate. They simply cull the cow. Thirdly, those cows that are treated and remain in the herd will produce about 800 pounds less milk the next month than cows that do not have a DA. Then let's look at the incidence of LDA. LDA stands for left-sided displaced abomasum. About 90% of the DAs are on the left side. The right side one is even more difficult to actually treat and may end up in more death losses. The rate of LDA will vary in herds anywhere from about 1.4% to as high as nearly 6% or if you have a really bad rash and this number can approach 10%. Again, the cost to actually do the DA will vary from $100 to $300, depending on the technician and the resources. One of the real key concerns is DAs or LDAs are related to the transition period, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Certainly, we know that dry matter intake during the transition period, especially the last two weeks before calving, goes down. We call that prepartum dry matter depression. That can be as much as 20 to 30 percent of the ration. Anytime a cow eats less feed, the window opportunity for displaced abomasum increases. Also, the, there's usually in many herds a slow rate of increase after calving, which again sets the cow up to be a negative energy balance and not have a fill factor. Another one is a low transition period dry matter intake also is an LDA risk factor because there is less room and fill, less bulk in it. More about that a bit later with straw. We also can sometimes see a reduction in forage consumption, especially in those herds that do not have total mixed rations or if the dry cows decide to sort the feed. And of course, we have other risk factors associated that occurs at the transition time period. Let's take a quick look at some of those postpartum disorders and how it relates to LDA. This is some interesting work that was done at Cornell and some Canadian research that show that if a cow has a ketosis problem, there's a 12 times greater risk that she will have an LDA. If she has a uterine infection or metritis, that risk increased from 5 to 45 times that she's going to have a DA. If she has an RP or retained placenta, she's a 7 times greater risk of having a DA. And finally, if she has low blood calcium or hypocalcemia, that risk increases 5 times. So you can see anything that starts this cascade of problems, the DA could be the real exclamation point when it all finishes. You also notice cows with LDA were at a greater risk for ketosis, a Canadian study, about 50 times more risk at this point. And certainly, therefore, any feeding and management practices that can prevent these other dis metabolic disorders should certainly reduce your risk of LDA, and ketosis is a real, real killer. Another factor with an LDA will be body condition score. It's pretty clear that cows that are excessively high in body condition score or fat cows at calving are a higher risk for developing LDA. And there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, they're at a greater risk to develop ketosis and fatty liver. Second of all, they eat less dry matter before calving and also after calving they eat less dry matter. Therefore, we'd like to target body condition scores for cows around 3.25 to 3.35. A new controversy on transition cow diets has been straw. And so some farmers are adding straw or consultants are adding straw to the diet because it will add some bulk, trying to minimize displaced abomasum and stimulate dry matter intake. Commonly, 5 or 10 pounds of straw is added to the close-up ration. However, this must not limit dry matter intake. If you add straw and they eat less, we are going to have a problem. If you add straw and they eat more because there's less energy in the diet, that's the winner. This cow must, or these cows must be on this ration for at least two weeks before calving because there's an initial drop in dry matter intake for the first three to four days after straw is introduced. Next, straw must be processed to be less than two inches in length to avoid sorting, or about half the width of the muzzle of the cow. Generally speaking, adding water improves straw intake because it reduces dust and softens the straw from its dry characteristic. And certainly, we want to reduce that amount of straw then after calving to one or two pounds to avoid limiting dry matter intake. Wheat straw appears to be the straw of choice.
Looking at some older, older research, we can see that the prepartum or before calving concentrate feeding can be a real problem. This is some work done by Carl Kopic at Cornell, and we can see here as forage intake goes down as percent of the ration dry matter, look at the marked increase in displaced abomasum. So certainly if cows eat excessively high amounts of concentrate or sort it out or can do that, then we again increase the risk of displaced abomasum. So then let's talk about some guidelines on energy feeding for that cow prior to calving. We would recommend these. First, the amount of dry matter coming from concentrates, 0.5% of the body weight of a cow. So if we have a Holstein cow weighing 1,400 pounds, six pounds of concentrate may be optimal at this point. We could look at some Missouri data and actually add something like soy hulls to the dry cow ration to bulk it up. The research from that lab would suggest 20 to 30 percent soy hulls can be a real plus and would not be considered part of that total concentrate calculation. Energy contents calculated around a 0.68 to 0.7 mcals per pound of dry matter. Typically about 30 percent non-fiber carbohydrate, the sugars, starches, and other products like that. We'd like to be over 70 percent forage in the ration. And finally, we would like to use a TMR to regulate or control the forage to concentrate ratio and minimize feed selectivity. One of the questions may be that if we have finely processed silages or forages, will that cause a problem? The answer is yes, it will, because it will increase the risk of DAs by, one, reducing the fiber mat in the rumen, therefore reducing the fill factor. Reducing cut chewing time will have a buffer effect. Third of all, we'll have lower rumen fill. We don't keep the fill factor into it. And finally, we'll decrease more rumen motility. All these factors would line up to increase the risk of LDA as it relates to particle size of the forage. So how do we evaluate the particle size, therefore, in a transition ration or in any diet? Well, the TMR should have at least 10% particles on the top box of the Penn State shaker box. Dry cows, this number could be even a size 15 or 20% as long as they do not sort it. When we look at haylage crop to have adequate particle size, we should have at least 20 to 25 percent of the particles on the top screen of the Penn State box. Another guideline is five pounds of long forage, one inch or greater than may aid in the transition program, and then probably limiting corn size to about 50 percent or lower of the total forage dry matter intake going into the transition cow. Another aspect we alluded to earlier was low blood calcium and its effects on LDA or left sided displaced abomasums. We know that cows are low in blood calcium at calving or have a five times greater risk of developing a DA. This low blood calcium may reduce rumen and abomasal motility critical, of course, to maintain and avoid displaced abomasum. Strategies to prevent low blood calcium at calving can be a very useful way to prevent LDA. Some of these strategies to control, therefore, hypocalcemia would be one to dilute down the potassium level in the dry cow ration in the close-up ration. Such things as corn sides, byproduct feeds, and straw could fit very nicely into this category. Another strategy would be to use anionic products such as soy chlor or biochlor to lower the decad in close-up rations. And finally, make sure we balance and regulate the diet for both calcium and phosphorus. Another new tool in our arsenal would be Romenzin, or the generic name Monenzin. Canadian researchers report there was a 25% reduction in LDAs by using Romenzin. In their studies, they used a control release capsule. Here in the U.S., we'd use an actual dry supplement. In these studies, about 300 milligrams of rumenzin was added to these dry cow diets, and what it did was to increase propionic acid production, therefore lowers ketosis, a risk factor, reduces lactic acid buildup, therefore reducing acidosis, and decreases protein degradation, increasing the amino acid content for the transition cow. There are some other bunk management factors we should consider as well. Certainly we know that uh, practices that restrict dry matter intake is going to be a problem, making that cow more prone for displaced abomation. Poor consumption of the forage and non-TMR rations really allows for feed selectivity to occur. Thirdly, errors in mixing and delivery can be a problem especially if we don't mix it long enough or we overmix it, as in the fourth case. And finally, we could also have sorting of the TMR in the feed manger. So certainly that is going to be a factor as well. So let's wrap up this module with some take-home messages. 
I would recommend that we try to achieve displaced abel masums below 3% of the cows that freshen in the herd in the year. Ideally, it would be, should be zero. We know that LDAs are related to many other metabolic disorders. Therefore, if we can correct those problems, in many cases, LDAs go away. Next, if I can maintain dry matter intake and long fiber intake, that is going to be a great preventative role as well. Control starch levels to avoid rumen acidosis and lactic acid buildup in the ration. And finally, look at straw and byproduct feeds as an effective way to prevent LDAs. Thanks. Have a great day.